Hello world, Noah here. In this video, I'm going to be explaining the differences between values and references in the Java programming language. On the left side of the screen, you'll notice a simple circle class that I've written. It contains one instance variable, uh, the radius of the circle, which we're storing as a double. It contains a constructor, which takes radius as a parameter and sets it appropriately. We also have a getter and setter for the radius, and we have getters for area and perimeter that use the standard circle equations. Nothing should be terribly confusing about that. It's just a standard, straightforward implementation of a circle. Now on the right is where I actually go ahead and use the circle class that I've created. You'll notice I declare two circles, C1 and C2. C1 is a circle with a radius of 2, and C2 is a circle with a radius of 3. On line 6, I set C1 equal to C2. I then change C2's radius to be 4. And finally, I print out C1's radius. Pause the video for a moment, look through that code, and take a guess as to what exactly will be printed out. What exactly will C1's radius be? In the meantime, let's take a look at this other file where we're dealing with something a little bit different. I've declared two doubles, x and y. x has a value of 3, excuse me, x has a value of 2, and y has a value of 3. I then set x equal to y, I set y equal to 4, and I print out x. You'll notice that these are very, very similar. You'll notice all the numbers are the same, and I'm doing essentially the same thing. So pause this video for a moment and decide what you think the left and right sides will result in. Will they be the same? Will they be different? Take a guess. And once you're done taking a guess, we'll take a look. On the left side, which uses double x and double y, the correct answer is 3. And on the right side, which uses circles C1 and C2, the correct answer is 4. That might be a little bit confusing, because it seems like they should be the same. They're both doing essentially the same thing, except one has a circle and the other one has a double. But I'm doing essentially the same operations, so why would they not give the same values? Well, let's start on the right uh, start on the left side with the value class. So I'm going to go ahead and collapse that down and we're going to take a look starting right here. We're going to go step by step through each line and essentially take a look at what is happening at each point. Now, on line 4, we create a variable called x and we give it a value of 2. Pretty straightforward. We say x is equal to 2. Okay, then on line 5, we declare a variable called y and give it a value of 3. Again, very straightforward. So we say y is equal to 3. Then when we get to line 6, we set x equal to y. So what happens is Java will look and say, what is the current value of the variable y? Well, it's 3 right now. So it will then set x equal to 3, just like that. So x is no longer 2, it is now 3. When I go to set y equal to 4, it will erase the current value of y, which was 3, and replace it with the number 4. Finally, when I print out x, it will print out 3, because the current value of x is 3. And indeed, if I run this again, you'll notice that it says 3 in the console. That seems pretty clear, and it does essentially what you'd expect it to, but what might be a little confusing is why the other example with the circles is any different. So let's go over to that code, and I'm going to erase that so that we can have a fresh starting point. And let's take a look at this code. Notice that I am creating an instance of a class, right? I created this class called circle right here. I defined it myself. And then right here, I'm creating a new circle. I'm instantiating an instance of the class. Hopefully that terminology should be uh, familiar to you. You'll notice that over in the value example, I'm not instantiating any object type. I'm just using a primitive type double. That is where the key lies, the difference between an object type and a primitive type. Let's just finish with this reference example first, and then we'll take a look at exactly what makes this difference. So we create a circle called C1, and it's a new circle of radius 2. So essentially what will happen is uh, Java will allocate enough memory to store 
a circle of length 2. So imagine that that crudely drawn circle is a chunk of computer memory that contains enough space to define an instance of a circle. And in this case, the value is 2. We're then assigning it to a variable called c1. So we have c1, which will point at this circle with a radius of 2. So I, rec I represent that with an arrow. c1 is pointing to that circle with a radius of 2. We're then going to create a circle of radius 3. Again, the memory will be allocated by Java. And once it is done and the object is instantiated, the identifier C2 will be set up to point to there. So far, it looks pretty similar to what we had before, except I'm using arrows instead of equal signs. That is important. Here's where the difference happens on line number six, when I say C1 equals C2. In the example with values, it would just say, what is the current value of y? Whatever it is, I'm going to set that value to x. There's no relationship between x and y. There's no link between them. It just says, whatever y might be at this particular moment, that's what I want x to be now. But it doesn't create a permanent relationship that lasts any longer than just that one line. And here's what I mean. When I say c1 equals c2, what happens is c1 destroys this link, it's no longer pointing to that circle of radius 2, it's now pointing to that circle of radius 3. You'll notice that both c1 and c2 are pointing at the same chunk of memory, the same object that is stored in memory. There is quite clearly a link between the two of them, being that they're both pointing to the same thing. Now, since there's no more links to that circle of radius 2, you'll notice there's nothing else pointing to it, there's no more references, Java will garbage collect it. It will be destroyed from memory because it's no longer necessary. Now we can move on to line number 7. We call c2.setRadius to be 4. So what that will do is it will say, well, what is c2 pointing to? It's pointing to that circle with a radius of 3, so it will set it to be a radius of 4. So I'm going to go ahead and erase that. Notice that it is still the same uh, circle. It just will now have a radius of 4, like that. I did not draw that very well. But you get the idea. Same exact circle, just a slightly different radius. And so when we go to print out c1.getRadius, it will basically ask, well, what circle is C1 pointing to? What place in memory is C1 pointing to? Well, it's pointing to this circle that now has a radius of 4. It just so happens that C2 is pointing to the exact same location. And so when I run this, you'll see the output is indeed 4, because there is a direct link between C1 and C2, and so modifying C2 does have an effect on C1, whereas modifying Y does not have an effect on x because there's no relationship established between the two of them. Now, value is used for any primitive type. There are eight of them in Java. There's integer, short, long, float, double, byte, character, and boolean. That's all eight. You can tell that it's a primitive type because it is all lowercase, the type name, like double, and it will turn purple or whatever color in your IDE because it is a reserved word. Now anything else that is not one of those eight types is an object type and therefore it will be a reference variable. We call C1 and C2 reference variables because they reference a location in memory. This does include strings as a matter of fact. Don't be confused by the fact that you can write strings by using double quotation marks. That's a special feature that Java lets you do, but strings are still object types, and they still work off of references and not values. So if you have some string variables, and you do essentially the same thing that we did in this example, but instead of x and y being doubles, they were now strings, you would notice the reference behavior and not the value behavior. I hope that makes sense. I've been teaching some computer science classes at my school, and this was a topic that took a little while for the students to understand, so I just wanted to make a video to 
clearly go through and explain the differences with examples. You might be wondering why exactly this is useful. Why would I create two different circles and then immediately discard one, uh, you know, and now have two different variables that point to the exact same circle? And you're correct, it's not exactly terribly useful. But here's where the importance comes in. Imagine that I wrote a, uh, a method, public static void modify, and it took a circle and it set the radius of the circle to be 5, let's just say. And then let's imagine over here that I make the same exact thing. So modify, and this takes a double called, we'll call it z, and this sets z equal to 5. These are both very, very similar methods, but the same behavior that we saw before will be noticed. Let's say that I go ahead and call modify on x. Okay, I'm going to call modify on x, and then I'm going to print it out. And it's still 3. That does not change anything, right? Because when I call modify with x, it will take whatever the current value of x happens to be at that point, which is 3, and it will assign it to this variable z. So when I set z equal to 5, it has no effect on the original variable x, because this method uses pass by value. Now over here, let's say that I do modify and I pass it C1 right before I print it out. You'll see that the output is now 5, it's no longer 4. And so I'll change that to reflect it. But essentially what happens here is C1 was a circle uh, for 2, uh, of radius 2, and I then set it to be this circle of radius 3. I modified it to be 4, so at this point C1 now has a radius of 4. But when I call modify, and I pass uh, a variable or a value to this circle C, this C is just another pointer. And if I draw it on the diagram, it would be a third pointer that would point to the exact same location in memory. So then if I go ahead and set the radius to be five, I would do exactly what I did before. I would erase that four and change it to a five. And so now C1 and C2 would also notice the exact same difference all of them would be pointing to a circle with a radius of 5. So when I print c1.getRadius, it will indeed notice the change. So that's the real reason why this is a good thing to know, because you might notice this behavior somewhere. You know, why is it that when I use a double, it doesn't work, and when I use a string or a circle or whatever other type it is, it does. And it's a little bit confusing if it's not explained. So I hope this video was helpful, maybe it cleared up a little bit of confusion, or maybe it was just a good review of some topics. As always, subscribe if you want to see more. If you enjoyed this video, maybe hit the like button, and I'll see you soon with more videos. Have a good night.